don't forget to donate to the hashtag Daytona Dream 2019 GoFundMe for your chance in January to win one of these three Kevin Harvick diecast. Now enjoy the video. It's finally time, ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome you to the regular season finale for the Division 1 of the Skittle Super Speedway Series. It's finally time when the checker flag waves the end of our 26 lap event tonight at the Orlando Super Speedway that we will determine the eight drivers that will represent for Division 1 in this season's Skill Super Speedway Series chase for the championship. Coming into this race, five drivers find themselves locked in at the drop of the green flag. Two drivers are question marks, and then there's a lot of drivers down there that are going to be in a dogfight, possibly, for that final eighth seed. Starting on the pole position is Derek Hamill. It's his first pole of his career. Of course, our winner back at Pepsi Super Speedway, and he's a driver that comes into this race really needing a win because he has that win back at Pepsi, but he's outside the top 30 in the points coming into this race. 32nd currently coming into tonight's event. If he goes to victory lane for a second time, though, it would undoubtedly move him back into the top 30 in points. I think he's only uh, five points out of 30th in the standings. And the second win would shoot him up tied with Ryan Butcher and Brady Burkhart for the number one seed when the playoff grid is put together. So it's really a must-win situation for the pole sitter. But let's try and figure out what the playoff scenario looks like right now. As I said, five drivers coming to this race pretty much confirmed in whether it be multiple wins with a win where they are in the point standings. Those five drivers are as follows. Brady Burkhart, Ryan Butcher, they're both in the top 10 in points, both have two wins this season, so there's no way they can fall out of the top 30 in points. And right now, points leader Ashlyn Boyd, Trent Dunham, who's second in the points, and Sebastian Kukulon, eighth in the standings, all former winners this season. They will be in the playoffs no matter what happens to them during the course of this evening's race. But what about some of the other scenarios? Well, we've got some question mark drivers. If they have good runs tonight, they will be locked in. Jessica Shelton and Vance Caldwell, 11th and 12th in points. Uh, they basically have one driver they're trying to finish ahead of here tonight, and that's Roger Ray. We'll give you the rest of the scenario in just a minute. Drivers, start your engines! And right now, Roger Ray comes into this race a total of 21 points behind Jessica Shelton. He's only 19 points behind Vance Caldwell. So if he manages to pass either one of them in the point standings, he would move up into either the 6th or 7th seed, and one of those two might fall down into the 8th seed. Now, why is that a problem? Well, because if you're in that 8th seed, and we end up having a driver go to victory lane for the second time this season that are back behind them in the points, or a driver ahead of them in the standings that goes to victory lane, they would be in the eighth seed and get knocked out of the playoffs at the last minute here tonight at Orlando. So for Shelton and Caldwell, their goal just to finish ahead of Roger Ray. Now Roger Ray's the guy with a lot of pressure because he's got to finish 20 spots ahead of Vance Caldwell or 22 positions ahead of Jessica Shelton, or he has to hope that somebody ahead of him in points like Trent Dunham, uh, Ashlyn Boyd, Sebastian Kukulon, or Shelton or Caldwell go to victory lane again so that way those two-time winners would be ahead of him in the point standings rather than behind him. I mean, drivers he has to worry about that could fit the bill of getting a second win and bypassing him, knocking him out, include Jay Jefferson, Jose Mills, Seth Cole, and the aforementioned Derek Hamill. But there's also pressure for drivers here that could get a win here tonight for the first time this season and automatically lock themselves up a spot in the playoffs. Drivers that fit that criteria include Patrick Zick, Laurent Lamont, who starts on the outside of the front row, Diego Yepes, JT Bryant, Cody Smart, also Tristan Folks, Preston Plourd, Carter Friesen, Matt Haas, J.J. Roberts, Austin LaPlante, Philip Goldberg, Riley Spurlytube, Shane Lake, and Jonathan Zorlin. All mathematically still have a shot, but they have to go to victory lane here in tonight's event. So that basically gives you the whole scenario of who's got a shot and who does not. Plus, we've got a pretty doggone good battle for the regular season championship going on as well. Six points separation amongst the top three. Ashlyn Boyd, the points leader, four points in hand over Trent Dunham, and six points over Brady Burkhart. So it'll probably be between those three to settle out for the regular season championship here tonight. But we're about to find out who's going to make it into the playoffs, who is not. 26 laps here tonight under the lights at Orlando Super Speedway. Green flags in the air. Let's roll. As you can see, Orlando, very unusual to the super speedways we've been going to. These drivers have been going the opposite direction and turning left at every super speedway we've been at. Here tonight, they're going the complete opposite direction and turning to the right. So that's a curveball for these drivers with playoff slots on the line. 
as Derek Hamill will not lead the first lap, at least it doesn't look like at this point, as Riley Spurley Tube's going to get to the inside and bypass him. Now here comes Philip Goldberg for the position, as they are four wide for about the fourth position, as Jonathan Zorlin way down low. Philip Goldberg's got Eli Bright helping him. Bright was able to clear Zorlin, and now they're going to go four wide again. That's William Duncan making the move as Philip Goldberg goes to the post. Now it's going to be Eli Bright trying to take the position. Ooh, they were almost five wide back there. That was Seth Cold banging doors with Roger Ray. Neither one of those drivers can afford a poor performance tonight. Seth Cole really needs to get a second win this season to lock himself up a spot in the playoffs. And of course, we mentioned already, Roger Ray comes in in that critical eighth playoff seed right now as Preston Plourd, they're five wide here at the front. Plourd with a rear decklet full of James Qualls helping push him to the race lead. Oh, I do not like the way it looks back there. They're five wide, several rows deep. They're almost six wide. Seth Cole thought about six wide. Contact, and there they go. Oh, we've got a big, big wreck. There was a wreck that took place in three different parts of the field right there, and it all culminated into one giant big one. As Preston Plourd's going to lead us back to the line, possibly. James Qualls looking to make a charge here. Can he get to the inside? I think he's there, but I don't think he's going to have enough momentum down the straightaway. It's going to be Preston Plourd who'll lead us under our first yellow of the evening. Takes place on lap number two. And of course, the big question about all of this is what potential playoff contenders got taken out in this wreck? I saw three different wrecks take place within about maybe half a second of each other. And it looked like one giant wreck because they all happened at the same time. So as these drivers here get themselves sorted out with where their running order is, let's take a look at the rear of the field, see who was involved. Oh, Ashlyn Boyd. Well, the good news, he came into this race locked into the playoffs. The bad news, he's out of the race. He will not be the regular season champion. Well, Ryan Butcher was caught up in a two-time winner. He's already locked into the playoffs, so... A little bit of a bitter, bittersweet moment for him. And Seth Cole, we mentioned he could not afford a bad run. He needs to get a win in order to make it in the playoffs. Looks like his playoff hopes are dashed. His teammate Andrew Miller was collected as well. J.J. Roberts there in the 81. Oh, another driver who needed a win in your in situation. Jose Mills, our winner from Coca-Cola. All torn up on the back end. Oh, there's Diego Yepes. Yepes. Needed a win to get in. He was running well in the points. He's sixth in the stands coming into this race. I think Roger Ray might be okay. Oh, nope. He's got left side damage. So now he's going to be on pins and needles as someone's blown up up ahead. That's Benjamin Miles. His day is done. Cody Smart, who could have gotten in with a win, is on the apron. He's got a lot of damage. Jay Jefferson, who was in a win in your end situation. He's involved. Riley Spurley Tube, another driver who was a win in your end. He's got damage. Philip Goldberg, another driver. Boy, there's a lot of drivers that fit that win in your end situation that were caught up in uh, that big wreck. Eli Bright, Carter Friesen, Sakuli, Patrick Zick. Brady Burkhart's coming to pit road with damage, and I haven't seen Trent Dunham damage. So right there, if, if Burkhart's out of this race, and we already know that Ashlyn Boyd's out, this could potentially give the regular season championship to Dunham. Dunham's on pit row, but I think this is a regularly scheduled stop for the one. Let's see if Burkhardt's team is going to try and get him back out there. Looks like they are. So the battle for the regular season championship is not over yet. As Preston Plourd came to pit row, but some drivers decided to stay out, including James Qualls. So he'll be the leader when we go back green. Let's go back and take a look at a replay of what happened. I think we're going to have a lot to cover for this big wreck that took place on lap number two. I want to watch this coming out of turn number two because Seth Cole, I think, made it six wide. They're five wide here with Bright, Haas, Lamont, Cole, and Roberts. Oh, Jay Jefferson pulling down to the apron there. I think he knew something was going to happen. Watch Seth Cole here. He's going to get a run on Cody Smart. He's going to try and move up and make it six wide to the outside of the 94, and there's just no room. Gets up and into Laurent Lamont. Makes contact with him once. Makes contact with him twice. And I think it's going to be this third pit right here. Oh, no, it actually started with William Duncan. Duncan came down into Haas, sent him into Lamont, who sent him and turned into Seth Cole. And then Cole swept up Joshua Sakuli and J.J. Roberts. And I think maybe the contact with William Duncan and Matt Haas started an incident on the outside line 
which uh, culminated down into this wreck involving Yepes and Brady Burkhardt and others. Now, Seth Cole doesn't look like he's too badly damaged there, but then he runs into the back of Jose Mills, and that's just going to kill that car aerodynamically. There you see Ashlyn Boyd, Andrew Miller, there's Roger Ray. Jack Mitchell's in the middle of all of that, but I don't think he got a whole heck of a lot of damage. Joshua Lee got spun out as well. I want to move up to the 69 of Diego Yepes and go back for just a moment because I think that the incident that took place on the high side started with him. All right, let's watch and see where the contact is here. Oh, maybe the double zero of Brady Burkhart gets up into Carter Friesen, perhaps? Okay, there's that one wreck. And then, yep, Burkhart gets Friesen, sends Friesen up into Roger Ray's right rear, and that's how that one started. It looks like Philip Goldberg may have hooked Eli Bright in the left rear as well. And it's just on from there. Derek Hamill, our pole sitter, gets a piece of it, it looks like. There's Roger Ray, there's Ryan Butcher. Shelton did a nice job slipping through all of that. There's the 04 of Patrick Sick. Jay Jefferson. Oh, Trent Dunham also slipping through there. In the one car, same for Vance Caldwell. So Dunham keeping his regular season championship hopes alive and Shelton and Caldwell making it through, keeping their hopes alive for getting the 6th uh, and 7th seeds or maybe even just the 7th and 8th seeds, but regardless, still making it into the playoffs. Well, that could have been a lot worse than it was, I think, but there are a number of drivers that have already gone behind the wall, so we'll try and document them all and try and see what the playoff scenario looks like now as we are under caution for the first time here tonight. The big one strikes early on lap number two. And with that wreck, it is claimed five drivers that will not finish out this race. Cody Smart, Benjamin Miles, Jay Jefferson, Seth Cole, and Ashlyn Boyd. Now, Ashlyn Boyd will finish dead last, will not win the regular season championship, obviously, but is locked into the playoffs, being the points leader coming into this race and having a win. Jay Jefferson, Seth Cole, that ends their championship hopes. They needed a second win here tonight in order to lock themselves in the playoffs. I don't think Benjamin Miles was mathematically eligible to uh, make it into the playoffs, even if he did have a win. Cody Smart, however, was. Cody came into this race ninth in the points, and with his DNF, he will not be in the playoffs this season in the Division I uh, chase for the championship. And we've got 35 cars that are still running and on the lead lap, but I'm kind of questioning how many of them are going to be up to speed. Now, we ended up having the top eight decide to stay out. Qualls, Taylor, Rogers, Lamount, Gardner, Kukulon, Bryant, and Winkle. Everybody else from Preston Pluard on back, who's going to restart in ninth, they all came to pit road. So with this early caution, we don't have a good idea of what the fuel window really is, but with... Preston and all the rest of them having to come to pit road here. Undoubtedly, these top eight will have to be on pit road at some point during this race. The only question is, Preston on back, will they have to pit again before this race is over? Are they good to go the rest of the way? Well, James Qualls had a pole this season at Pigs Creek. Other than that, his season's not exactly been much to write home about as he is dead last in the point standings. Only one top ten so far this season. He'd love to finish out the regular season with a win, though, as the green flag is back in the air. Now, I want to just document real quickly about uh, the fact that with Qualls right now not eligible to make it into the playoffs, right now the pressure is still on drivers Shelton, Caldwell, and Ray. Let's see where those three restarted. Shelton restarted 12th, Caldwell in 13th. And Roger Ray continues on. He's down in the 30th position, though. So right now, if the race were to end, Caldwell and Shelton would be safely into the playoffs. Roger Ray, of course, uh, he's still got to worry about a potential first-time winner going to victory lane here tonight because he's in that 8th position in points. A couple of drivers that would fit that criteria. Preston Plourd, JT Bryant, Jonathan Zorlin, who are all up inside of the top 10. Is Wow, Kukulon almost hooking James Qualls in the right rear. That was a close call for the lead. Kukulon comes into this race locked into the playoffs. He's got a win. He's eighth in the point stands. Oh, there's a wreck. Oh, that's a big wreck. And Preston's around along with Johnny Gardner. Three wide to the line. Who's going to get it? I think it was Taylor. Wow, what if that had been the finish? Oh, man, but they wreck again. 
And that was two different wrecks that took place. The first one, I think, started with Johnny Gardner. The second one with Preston Plored. And as the yellow flag waves once again, oh, Jack Mitchell, his day is done. William Duncan smoking. Tristan Folks, that's one of the drivers that with a win could have locked himself in the playoffs. So his championship hopes are done. Zach Winkle. He uh, was 36th in points. Oh my goodness, Roger Ray. Roger Ray is involved. Last week's winner. Out of the race now, Eli Bright. And you saw Joshua Lee sitting on the pit lane as well. Johnny Gardner, Carter Friesen, Jake Rogers, Derek Hamill, the pole sitter, and Riley Spurley Tube all out of the race. Well, we're going to have to start working the calculators now because as I'm looking here, I'm trying to figure out Roger Ray is out of the race. And now he basically leaves his fate in the hands of the rest of the drivers that are in this race in terms of any driver ahead of him in the point stands or at least within the vicinity of him going to victory lane. If they do, for the first time this season, they would probably be in and Roger Ray would be out. And Taylor will come down pit road as the leader. I think everybody's coming to pit road. Maybe someone stays out. Who knows? But for now, we're going to go back and see what happened. Big wreck taking place out of turn four. Second caution of the night. I was more focused on the grid scene. Who was running where? I didn't really see what started this wreck. I just saw the seven completely sideways and into the wall. So let's see how this culminates. Preston Plourd on the back bumper of Johnny Gardner couple of Pepsi sponsored Chevrolets oh it starts up there Zachary Taylor got hooked by Rogers that forced him down to the inside that's how he even got the lead in that three wide move and then Rogers gets sent back up the track across the nose of Johnny Gardner and then Preston gets sent down into Kyle Matthews Shane Lakes I think gonna get a piece of it and look how the track just starts getting blocked up there's nowhere for anyone to go Kyle Matthews goes up he gets Zach Winkle there's LaPlante, Matt Haas involved, and there they just come flying in. Nobody's slowing down, nobody's lifting. Vance Caldwell got a piece of that in the 16. There's the Cooley, here comes Brady Burkhart. Trent Dunham! Oh, I think he got a piece of it, yes he did. There's Hamill, there's Friesen, there's Lee. Oh, and then they just, oh my goodness. There's Roger Ray, Tristan Folks, Eli Bright's up and over, Roger Ray's up and over. Miller is flipping, Spurly Tube is flipping. Ryan Butcher, Goldberg is into it. Bright continues to barrel roll. That's Tristan Folks up on the top side that's still barrel rolling. Diego Yepes is in it. Oh my goodness. Well, we've had two big ones here tonight now, and we're only about seven laps into this race. And with these wrecks, the playoff picture is becoming much, much clearer. There's no doubt about that. But Trent's got damage now. Burkhardt's got damage. We know Ashlyn Boyd's out of the race. Wow. And Roger Ray upside down on his roof. And he will not finish out this race. His playoff hopes right now dangling by a thread. And we'll have to wait and see if they were able to accumulate enough points during this regular season for him to make it in with that win that he had last week. Well, we haven't gotten the one degree signal yet, but Jonathan Zorlin's team getting it done on pit road, and this is not what Roger Ray wants to see because coming into this race, Jonathan Zorlin currently 24th in the points. Roger Ray was 18th in the standings, but Zorlin, I believe, was only 16 points back behind Roger Ray coming into this race. Uh, no, 17 points back. And with Roger Ray out of the race, if Zorlin were to win, he would pass Roger Ray in the points, and his win would put him in the eighth and final transfer seed. Shelton up there in third, so I think right now she's locked into the playoffs with where she's currently running with the departure of Roger Ray and Vance Caldwell with damage. Let's see who's out of the race after that one. And Oh my goodness, do we really only have 10 cars left in the race? We only have 10 cars left in this race. Are you kidding me? Everyone else is out. That has to be the biggest wreck we've had all season. 
11th on down are out of this race. It's going to be LaPlante in 11th, Yepes in 12th, Patrick Zick in 13th, 14th, Matt Haas, 15th will be Trent Dunham, who I believe, with finishing there, I believe he's going to be your regular season champion now. Because he finishes one position ahead of Brady Burkhart, who he had two points advantage on coming into tonight's race from the gap from second to third. And then also out of the race, Sakuli, Matthews, Roberts, Miller, Ryan Butcher, Vance Caldwell's out in the 22nd position, but he manages to finish ahead of Roger Ray. Goldberg is out, along with William Duncan, Zach Winkle, Tristan Folks, Eli Bright, Roger Ray, Joshua Lee, Johnny Gardner, Carter Friesen, Riley Spurley to Derek Hamill, Jake Rogers, Jack Mitchell, and they join Cody Smart, Benjamin Miles, Jay Jefferson, Seth Cole, and Ashlyn Boyd in the garage area. So this makes it so much easier to figure out the playoff scenario because there's only 10 doggone drivers left on the racetrack. So right now, for Roger Ray, here's hit the, what he needs to not have happen. Zorland, that's a driver he does not need to have go to victory lane. Zachary Taylor, he comes into this race currently situated 29th in points. I don't think mathematically with a win he could pass Roger Ray, so he would be fine, I think, with the John Deere Chevrolet winning this race. Jessica Shelton, She's already now, with where she's running, already locked into the playoffs. So if she got a second win, that would not affect Roger Ray. James Qualls, he's dead last in points. If he were to win, he's too far back to get back into the top 30 in points. So if he won, that would not knock Roger Ray out. Jose Mills, that is a driver he does have to worry about. A former winner this season. If he goes to victory lane a second time here tonight, he would be in, Ray would be out. Kukulon, already locked in. So if he wins, Ray would still be in as well. Laurent Lamont comes into this race fifth in the point standing. So if he got a win, Roger Ray would be out. JT Bryant comes into this race seventh in the standings. If he were to win, Roger Ray would be out. Preston Plourd comes into this race in the 14th position in points. If he were to win, Roger Ray would be out. And Shane Lake comes into this race 23rd in points. He's only, I believe, 14 points behind Roger Ray in the standings. If he were to win, I believe Roger Ray would also be out. So right now, Roger Ray is the biggest cheerleader of drivers like Zachary Taylor, James Qualls, Jessica Shelton, and Sebastian Kukulon. Because anybody else going to victory lane means he would be out of the playoffs as the green flag's back in the air. We're not even halfway, and all the remaining drivers are guaranteed a top 10 finish here tonight. And I hope we've seen our last caution. If they manage to wreck and have another yellow flag with only 10 drivers on track, that, that would be pretty bad. So now as we look at drivers like Jessica Shelton and Sebastian Kukulon, this is a big opportunity for both of them to try and get their second win of the season because if they manage to do that, they would tie Brady Burkhart and Ryan Butcher for the number one seed. And right now over in Division 2, there's only one two-time winner, that being Charles Sanford. So it would be a four-way tie for the number one seed between Division 1 and Division 2 with the reformatted playoff standings. Right now it's a battle of two-car tandem. Shelton helping Zorlin up top. Qualls helping Zachary Taylor down low. Who's going to lead the lap? It's going to be Jonathan Zorlin. On that top side, he's got a little bit of extra help of Kukulon back there. Right now the top five have broken away, but you've got JT Bryant not too far back trying to reel them in. I think he's up to speed. I think he just started behind some slower cars, and that's why he didn't get as good of a jump. If they stay side by side up ahead, I think JT might be able to get up there and battle in this. Don't know about Preston Plourd. Preston got some pretty good contact in that last wreck, but he might have a shot to get up there. Shane Lake back in the 8th position. Jose Mills there in ninth. Rent Lamount back in 10th. So Lamount might be out of the running. And same for Jose Mills unless they're able to work out some kind of fuel strategy perhaps. And yeah, JT Bryant's going to reel in these top 5. So there'll be 6 drivers up in this lead pack. And of those 6 drivers, the last 2 drivers that Roger Ray wants to see out in front are the 48 of Jonathan Zorlin or the 22 of JT Bryant. So we are 
just past midway through this race, we already know a number of things. Number one, we know for certain that Trent Dunham's going to be the regular season champion this season. Looks like it's going to be officially two points he will have over Brady Burkhart. Ashton Boyd will finish out the regular season points in third after an early DNF and finishing dead last year tonight. And we also know for certain now seven of the drivers that will compete in the playoffs for Division I. Two-time winners at this point, Brady Burkhart and Ryan Butcher, as well as Ashlyn Boyd, Trent Dunham, Sebastian Kukulon, Jessica Shelton, and Vance Caldwell. The big question is, though, who is going to get that final transfer spot? Right now, it's between Roger Ray, Jonathan Zorlin, and J.T. Bryant. Jonathan Zorlin, as we mentioned, came into this race in the 24th position in points, 17 points behind Roger Ray. Well, one thing he's doing right now is certainly going to help him in terms of points-wise in reeling Roger Ray in. He's already led a lap. That's a bonus point. If he can manage to lead the most laps here tonight, that's another bonus point. So then he would only have to worry about finishing 15 positions ahead of Roger Ray. But again, he has to win. With Roger Ray finishing out of this race in the... 28th position in points, or in the 28th position in the running order, Zorlin easily is going to pass him in the point standings. There's no doubt about that. The question is, is he going to win? Well, right there, JT Bryant may be feeling his best opportunity to get the race lead is to push somebody else there first. So now Sebastian Kukulon out in front leading this race. Kukulon, who went to victory lane earlier on this season at Todring, now trying to pick up his second win of the year, and Get up there in a four-way tie for the number one seed. James Qualls pushing JT Bryant. Jessica Shelton right behind him. And now Shelton's going to go to the inside three wide. As Zorlin gets a nice run on the 42. He's going to switch lanes. Go to the inside of Kukulon. And he's got drafting help in the form of JT Bryant. Can he clear him off of turn number four, though, is the question. Yes, he will. Nice move. Jonathan Zorlin, who spent a good portion of the beginning of the season down at the bottom of the point standings, steadily worked his way back up into the top 30 in the standings and up to 24th coming into this race. He picked up last week two spots in the point standings, moving up to 24th. And every single one of Jonathan Zorlin's three top 10 finishes have been finishes also inside of the top five. So when he finishes good, he finishes very good. And now has a shot at the last minute to snatch a playoff position. Sebastian Kukulon now side by side with him and that's allowing second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth all to catch right back up. And of course that big question as well, did these drivers under that last caution come to pit road? If you're just joining us, only 10 drivers are still left in the race after two big wrecks took place in the first seven laps of the event. We know Trent Dunham is the regular season champion. We know seven of the eight playoff contenders. The eighth one still up for grabs between the 22 of Bryant, the 48 of, of uh, Zorlin. They're trying to win Roger Ray, hoping that they do not. And right now, there's only six drivers up in this lead pack with a shot, potentially, of winning this race, unless it comes down to fuel strategy. Preston Plourd still back there in seventh. So his car obviously is off the pace as he's got Shane Lake right behind him. That's a battle between these two damaged cars for seventh. Jose Mills and Laurent Lamount there in their own little battle for ninth place. Up front, lead change. Jessica Shelton to the point. Shelton hasn't been to victory lane since Dragonette earlier on this season. Her teammate Charles Sanford over in Division Two, a two-time winner, so she'd like to be a two-time winner as well. And we're seeing all the lanes work here in terms of drafting. The inside line has worked, the sideline has worked. I think Shelton made a move in the middle and then to the high side to get the race lead there. And now Jonathan Zorlin wants the top spot back. He looks to the outside. He'll get to the left rear quarter panel, but will he have anybody willing to push him when they get down here into three? He doesn't even need any drafting help. Look at him doing this on the outside line all by himself. 
Tries to stay door to door with Shelton off of four. Succeeds in doing so. Now can he get the run off the corner? I think he'll lead the lap, but will he clear? Yes, he will. Zorlin back to the front as now Zachary Taylor looks low for the second position. That was three wide for the lead there for a brief moment. And now Taylor on the bottom is going to go for the top position. Sebastian Kukulon a little squirrely as he makes it even lower and brings James Qualls with him. And now Qualls thinking four wide down the back straightaway. Can he make it stick is the question. Ooh, give room guys. Oh no! They saved it but Taylor gets hooked up into the wall by Jonathan Zorlin. And that may have taken Zorlin out of competition to be in the playoffs. Oh, and I don't think Zorlin's very happy with Zachary Taylor right now. Tempers overflowing as Zorlin hooked Taylor up into the wall. No caution. We're still racing. And now that whittles it down to just one driver standing between Roger Ray and a ticket into the playoffs. And that's that yellow number 22 of JT Bryant. No caution as Zorlin and Taylor are out of the race. Eight drivers remain in this event. And we are down to four drivers competing for this win. Kukulon, Qualls, Shelton, and Bryant. James Qualls now on the inside is going to try and go to the race lead. No drafting help really needed. He makes the pass very easily on the Delta L Airlines Chevy Camaro. Oh, look out! Shelton trying to get to pit road, almost got into JT Bryant. And I think these are regularly scheduled stops. So it looks like third and fourth, they're gonna roll the dice, come to pit road now. One lap earlier, Jose Mills and Laurent Lamont were in. So we'll probably see Qualls and Kukulon in this time. They're pitting their final round of pit stops within five laps to go. So now it's going to depend, Qual, uh, Qualls and Kukulon, they're together. Shelton and Bryant, they're together. Who's going to have the best two-car tandem, though, when the pit stops finally cycle out? I think we're going to see the 42 and the 70 on pit road this time. Preston Plourd, I think, was already on pit road. Shane Lake, I think, stayed out an extra lap. So he'll probably be in this time as well. As Kukulon peels off, he's coming to pit road. Qualls will stay out another lap. Shane Lake right now would unofficially be in the third position, and I believe he's slowing to come to pit road. No, he's going to stay out another lap as well. So Kukulon gave up the lead. Now Qualls out in front. I want to just drop back and see about Shelton and Bryant. Did they come out together? Because they came in together. No, they're not really lined up with each other. They're pretty separated. Bryant might be able to reel in Shelton, but it's going to take a little bit. He might catch up to her this lap. Who knows? Kukulon leaving pit road. As James Qualls, the last of the drivers that are up to speed... Yet to hit pit lane, and he's going to come down pit road this time. And if the 55 of Shane Lake comes to pit road, that's going to be the last of the drivers to hit pit road. Then we're going to have to watch the battle between the 70, 42, 02, and 22. In terms of who's going to be the race leader, Shane Lake stays out another lap. So he's going to get himself a bonus point, I believe, for leading a lap. That's at least a good thing for him. And is it possible for him to make it the rest of the way on fuel? If Shane Lake, with a damaged car, manages to come away with this win, that would be amazing. He comes into this race currently 11 points behind Roger Ray. So there's no doubt with a win he would get into the playoffs. We kind of discounted him because he was so damaged and off the pace. But if he's been saving fuel and has enough to make it these final two and a half laps, that will be an unbelievable feat for this 55 car. He's going to pass Jose Mills and Laurent Lamont. 
And will he stay out? Is this his strategy? Is he going to run it out of fuel trying to win? And there's the answer. He has to come to pit road. Drop back to James Qualls. He did get out ahead of Sebastian Kukulon. Shelton and Bryant, though, they're lined up nose to tail, so they are making hay right now, trying to run down the top two. And they've got them in their sights. Kukulon has got the draft of Qualls. This four-car fight ain't over. Now, I think Qualls and Kukulon just hit the line for two to go. Next time, by will be the white flag lap. And Kukulon swings around the outside. He'll take the top spot. Shelton and Bryant trying to close in. They got to settle out this difference for third, get back nose to tail if they're going to reel him in. They were about 1.3 seconds back behind Qualls at the line that last time by, as now Kukulon shows the way. James Qualls might be in the catbird seat. Where would he plan to do a slingshot move? Kukulon's already locked into the playoffs, but he wants a second victory. Qualls wants a win because he's dead last in the points. He wants to get his first top five finish of the season. Shelton and Bryant lined up nose to tail. They might reel in these guys as the white flags displayed. One more lap to go. Qualls shoots to the outside on Kukulon. He's not going to get there. Not yet. Oh, I, uh, is he to the outside? I can't tell. And look at Shelton and Bryant. They've got a pretty good run right now, but do they have enough time? Qualls loses a little bit of touch with Sebastian Kukulon. He's got to get back in line here, try and get the draft down the back straightaway. Shelton closing quickly. Does she have enough time to make a move in three and four? Is she close enough? Qualls closes back up to the bumper of the 42. Can he get there to make a move? Kukulon moves low. Here comes Shelton with a huge run to the inside of Qualls for second. Can she get to the inside of Kukulon coming to the line? She's making the move. Here comes Shelton. Shelton low. Kukulon high. Who's got the momentum? Drag race to the line. It's going to be Shelton by a splitter. Holy cow. Shelton's gonna get the win. Second win of the season. She'll tie for the number one seed, was already locked into the playoffs. What a finish. I didn't know if she was close enough. I knew she had the momentum to get Qualls and maybe Kugel on through three and four, but she had to be close enough, and she was. Holy cow. We may have only had eight cars finish this race, but what a regular season finale. Holy Toledo. Three one hundredths, the unofficial ticker says. We'll find out what the official scoring was of the interval between Shelton and Kukulon. Both drivers were locked into the playoffs. They knew that. But both of them wanted to get their second win of the season. And that's what that drag race was all about. And with the win, Shelton secures Roger Ray the final position in the playoffs. So we now know our eight drivers that will battle for the championship here in Division 1. How about that? My goodness. We're going to go back... And we are going to look at that interval. There it is. Look at that. About half a car length. Shelton got Kukul on by. That was amazing. Woo! Anyway, with Roger Ray out of the race in the 28th position... With where he was positioned, he basically had to only worry about two things. One, not having a first-time winner. Shelton quelled that possibility, and he needed to make sure he also finished ahead of Jay Jefferson because Jefferson was within striking distance with a win points-wise, and Jefferson did not finish ahead of him. So Roger Ray will get the final transfer spot into the playoffs. So it's official. We know that it will be Brady Burkhart, Ryan Butcher, Jessica Shelton, all his two-time winners, Ashlyn Boyd, Trent Dunham, Sebastian Kukulon, Vance Caldwell, and Roger Ray as one-time winners. Those are your eight 
representatives for this season's chase for the championship for Division One. Eight drivers finished out the race, all on the lead lap. Everybody else was behind the wall. And you can just see all the way down through the rest of the finishing results here. Trent Dunham brings it home in the 15th position. He finishes out of the race, but he is going to be the regular season champion for the Division I Skittle Super Speedway Series. And there you can see the rest of the drivers all the way on down there. Two huge wrecks, one on lap two, one on lap seven, is what put the majority of our field behind the wall. And it all came down to fuel strategy and a photo finish that was officially 35 one thousandths of a second. Jessica Shelton capturing her second win of the year. It's going to give that team a lot of momentum heading into the playoffs for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's race. If you did, be sure to give us a video like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We have shown you full finish results. These are your overall point standings heading into next week. And you're about to also see what your playoff standings would look like right now based on the Division 1 drivers. We still don't know about all eight of the Division 2 drivers. You'll see the updated playoff grid when we get to that point. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow night where we will determine the Division 2 playoff contenders here at Orlando. Until then, I've been Seth Cole, and you've been watching your production of the SRA Offline Racing at its best. We'll be